happy to welcome back Brian Reynolds from the Butterflies of the World Foundation. Well, Brian, butterflies are so large and showy, which is why, of course, we all love them, but that also makes them very visible to predators. Yes. But they've developed some wonderful techniques to uh, hide from those predators and protect themselves. Tell yeah. me about some of these. Sure. Well, as everybody knows here in Oklahoma, we have cross timbers habitat throughout mm -hmm. a lot of the state. So we have forest butterflies that have uh, become very camouflaged and practically blend right in on the forest floor and, mm -hmm. and disappear. Yeah, I remember looking for those hackberry butterflies on the tree trunks earlier this season. They blend in so well. Yes, they sure do. Uh, there's some others like that with uh, leaf shapes in their wings yes. as well. Yep, we have mm -hmm. the Carolina Satyr, the Little Wood Satyr, mm -hmm. Cobbin Wood Nymph, uh, uh, and these... the Gem Satyr. So quite a few of them that are, that are forest butterflies. So they're using color and wing shape as well. Right? Yes, and yeah. another neat thing on these butterflies, especially the brown ones, are the eye spots that they have. Yes, uh, some of those larger butterflies and even several moths have um, some have really large eye spots and that's to make them look like a predator. Yes, it is. There's a couple different uh, techniques that they use. One of them is the eye spots are a startle mechanism mm -hmm. and they can kind of open their forewings and expose those eye spots to a, to a possible predator like a bird. And birds are very nervous creatures also. There's always a bigger bird that wants to eat them. So there's just enough of a delay when that butterfly opens its mm -hmm. eye and the bird will kind of pause and the butterfly will be able to then take off and, and escape. Mm -hmm. Now another way they use eye spots are along the edge of the wing. Yes. Mm -hmm. All birds know to make the kill, to get the meal, aim for the head. That's mm -hmm. the fastest way to, to make a kill. So they'll aim for the eye. So a lot of butterflies have eye spots in non-vital areas of the wings mm -hmm. that will draw attention for a predator to strike at that. So you'll see a lot of these butterflies with perfect little V marks missing out of their wings yes. where probably a bird has, has tried to swipe it and grab them. Mm -hmm. The bird gets a mouthful of wing and the butterfly will gets escape. Away. And they can actually fly with a lot of their wing missing. Very good. So, There's a real similar technique where the tips of the wings kind of look like a head that they yes. look like antennae. That's a great example. Mm -hmm. And those butterflies are the hair streaks. Okay. And they're small. They're about thumbnail sized. And they're actually fairly approachable. If you move slow and, and move very slow and get up close to them, what they like to do is they'll kind of rotate their back end to you and they rub their hind wings up and down like this. And those little filaments that are at the back end of those wings will wiggle and draw attention to that area that looks like a false head. Mm -hmm. So again, the predators know, aim for the head and strike that area, and it's a non-vital area on the butterfly that it could lose a little bit of that wing and then still escape and, and be able to live another day. Excellent. Now there's another kind of group of uh, protection, and that's mimicry. Yes. And I think of the classic example in my mind is the viceroy monarch. Yes, that's an excellent example. Uh, monarchs, they eat, as we discussed in another episode, they eat uh, milkweeds, and those have poisons, and that are carried on and all uh, predators know when they see a, a butterfly that's orange like that to avoid it. So then they used to think the viceroy mimicked the monarch and that the viceroy was edible, which would be called Batesian mimicry. Mm -hmm. And they've just recently discovered that the viceroy itself is mm -hmm. also distasteful. So they mimic each other and that's called Mullerian mimicry. Mm -hmm. And they don't really know way back in history which one was the first one. Right, but they're both distasteful. They have toxins yes. and uh, that protects them. And then of course that bright orange yes. warning coloration. Now there's another complex that's more of the Batesian mimicry yes. here in Oklahoma involving the pipe vine swallowtail. The pipe vine swallowtail mm -hmm. is the model and their caterpillars eat pipe vines and they mm -hmm. sequester poisons out of that and they're a black butterfly with a shiny blue on the wings mm -hmm. and all predators know when they grab that they instantly know that it's distasteful so they'll drop it mm -hmm. and so there's other butterflies here in Oklahoma that mimic that butterfly and mm -hmm. we actually have a complex of six butterflies total mm -hmm. we have the black swallowtail which is our state butterfly mm -hmm. then we have the black form of the eastern tiger swallowtail the mm -hmm. female and then we have the Diana fritillary then we have the red spotted purple and then the spice bush swallowtail. So it's one thing that's kind of confusing that people are just starting on in butterflies. They see the black with the shiny blue and they think, oh, that's the same species. Yeah. But in reality, it's a big mimicry ring. Possibly they're seeing different species that day. 
but they all look the same. Yeah, and that's a protective mechanism. Yes. So. It's really amazing, you know, how many different um, mechanisms have evolved in the butterfly world, and of course we see that in other animals and other insects, but it's nice to see an explanation, uh, or at least one explanation for some of the beautiful colors and uh, colorations we see on the butterflies. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you. Mm -hmm.